love of cars started with my granddad. I spent a lot of time with him and I remember when he bought his brand new VN Commodore back in 1990 and you know I was only very young then um, but spending obviously a lot of time with him and the car uh, I think that's where my sort of love started with Holden's um, but it obviously goes further back with um, finding out that my dad owned a 1969 HT Monaro GTS in Daytona France which is what I actually own today so Little did I know, but uh, Holden was in my blood going way back to the 60s. I, I, I remember being picked up in the VN um, almost every day after school, um, and then uh, school holidays with Grandad in driving in through the Adelaide Hills um, up to Birdwood um, to check out the National Motor Museum. Just have fond memories, and it's, it's sort of weird now being grown up and me being able to drive his car, because he only drove his car, he didn't let anyone else drive his car. It feels weird being behind the wheel in the driver's seat of his car after spending so many years being in the passenger seat with him and always looking to the right and knowing he was always there. The Beta Birdwood is history in motion. Everyone knows that the last Sunday in September is Beta Birdwood Day. It wouldn't be until I was in my teenage years, um, I'd say to the granddad, look, let's get up early, let's go down to West Beach, uh, let's go see all the old Monaros, Falcons, Valiants. So we did, so we'd go down there um, just before it'd start, it'd be packed obviously, full of people. Um, we'd sit there and you know, he would say, oh, I, remember, I remember that car, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so owned that car and um, yeah, so it was, it was great for I guess him to sort of, you know, really relive his past in the cars that sort of helped shape his life and obviously the future of Australia. I got my very first Holden at the age of 17. So my grandparents bought me my very first car, which I still have today, and that's a VS Commodore. Look, it's probably not worth a lot, but it's worth a lot to me in sentimental value. And then as I got older and I you know got a job as an apprentice obviously that freed up some cash flow so I was looking to buy a second car you know that day came and all of a sudden I had two cars I was like oh wow this is pretty cool I'm a young guy I have two cars I don't know any other young people who have more than one car everyone else is into modifying their car hotting up their car and that's where they're spending their money I'm actually looking to acquire you know an another car and I think from then on, as the money freed up, I was like, and I liked another car, I'd buy another car, where I've now ended up with seven cars. I'm sure my wife, she doesn't like it. I think she's learnt to love it. Maybe at times she humours me. I had bought a 1969 HD Monaro GDS and from all those years going to West Beach with Grandad, you know, I never thought that I would own a classic car that could enter Beta Birdwood, but now that possibility was a reality. I guess you can say I had lots of practice having been there so many years as a spectator but never as an entrant and that first year was a bit of an eye-opener. It was very surprising turning onto Anzac Highway and having this wall of people and I was just very taken back by it. I was like, wow, all these people both left and right lining the whole way of Anzac Highway from the bay up to Green Hill Road um, and yeah, just constantly waving tooting, um, having to pay attention to the car in front of you so that you don't accidentally run into the back of it. But yeah, it was just, it was a totally different experience being an entrant in the Beta Birdwood than it is as, as a spectator. I had been to the 2018 Monaro Nationals, uh, driven all the way from Adelaide to Tasmania, and I had one first place in Survivor class. Um, my vehicle being original, being cared for, being preserved. So when the 2020 Beta Birdwood entries opened up, I knew my car would be worthy um, of, of entering the preservation class. 
it was cold and raining on that Saturday morning and there's me in my polyester shirt and flare pants and, and wig and you know look at, looking looking at my other contenders I I didn't think I was in with a chance. I remember them saying over the PA speaker, look, we're sorry everybody, we just have to hold you here just a little bit longer because we can't pick a clear winner in preservation class. So we're on the way to the winery and my phone rings and my wife Megan answers it and says that I've won. I'm, I'm shocked, I'm like, what? I can't believe it. You know, I really thought I was up against some stiff competition. And you know what, here it is behind me, in my display case, you know, fa fantastic. I tell everyone, oh yeah, just go, go up to the museum, you know, there'll, there'll be a trophy with my name on it, you know. It's an honour to be able to win preservation class in, you know, a fantastic event like the Beta Birdwood, but not just any Beta Birdwood, the actual 40th anniversary of the Beta Birdwood makes it just a little bit special. With preservation class, it's not just about preserving the vehicle, but also anything and everything that belongs to the vehicle, such as the owner's books, uh, paraphernalia, brochures. All of this adds to the desirability of a preservation class winning vehicle. So for example, this would be very much a rare item to have, and I was very fortunate to get one from a friend who was a long time Holden dealer. Now, this is the body color and trims that's associated with the HT range of Holdens. Um, it lists all available combinations and options that you could uh, have when you ordered a brand new vehicle back in the day that only the dealer would have this information and for it to survive 50 years is you know, quite extraordinary. For example, it has the color of my vehicle, which is Daytona bronze. And when I put this up against the vehicle, it's an, it's an exact match, um, you know, to have. Um, and also the different types of interior combinations you could have, which is black and houndstooth, black and orange houndstooth. And something very rare to have in this collection, and especially to have with a preservation award-winning vehicle. My 1969 HT Monaro GTS is affectionately known as Ruby. So when Ruby turned 50 back in 2019, I thought, I'm gonna set myself a little task. I'm gonna try and find her the original owners who bought her in November 1969. And as we drove up the driveway, the whole family was there, including the two sons that were pictured when they were very little and it was sort of like blown away. The whole family had come to see Ruby. And it was just a great moment, um, not just for me, um, but for them as well that, you know, look, your car has survived over 50 years. It didn't end up in Sims Metal. It wasn't hotted up. It was very special and touching to be able to reunite my car with its original owners. Mm -hmm.